One, two, three. Oh, fresh air, navel, breathe. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> this is Valerie's first time seeing Mabel for a long, long time. How do you like it? Ah, uh, I want her back. I hope you enjoyed meeting Mabel and Valerie and Bernie. Well, we're following Bernie right now to another barn that he has where he stores cars. Some of which are his and some belong to a client and most of them are interesting. So we're gonna head on this very beautiful estate. As you can see, the rain and the wind is picked up. As they predicted, this is a severe storm weekend. So we're trying to battle through it. Uh, we tried to get the outdoor cars taken care of yesterday and now we're working on the indoor cars. So we're inside, going inside now, unit number three, which is uh, Bernie's, one of Bernie's barns. So but let's see what you got in here, old man. It, I've left the right wrong keys behind. Only joking. <laughs> Look at this high tech. Unbelievable, isn't it? I'll just put the light on for you. Welcome. Oh, this is a beauty. Oh, man. Is this an M5? Touring. M5 wagon. Oh, man. The, light, the lights will come on, but they take a bit of time. So this is an... All right, you know I'm a wagon guy, and I am also happen to be a BMW guy. This is like the cat's meow. I don't think it was ever available in the States, but it's a BMW 5 Series M5 wagon with a five-speed. Oh man. This is what they call an individual. So you, this is the third one off the lot, line of production. That's at the end for this uh, series. And basically, you can't buy these cars. They never come on the market. People who own these cars never want to sell them. So we've been looking for about five, six years. Uh, this belongs to a client of mine, it's not my car. He said, go and get it. So I looked at the car and it's a very individual color. Um, is super that nice Aber Abergene? Aubergine. Aubergine. You bleeding Abergine. <laughs> Flipping heck. Anyway, it's Aubergine, not Abergine. Anyway, so this car is just a nice old car. It's done 100,000 uh, miles. It's been well looked after. It's probably had a bit of paint here and there. Uh, rare, rare car. And these are the cars that guys in their 40s are now dying to get because it's their era. Everybody yeah, has their yeah, era. Yeah. So, nice car. Nice one, yeah. So we've got various cars in this building. Mm -hmm. This is a 72 Corvette. This car here I own. Uh, I bought it during the summer. Um, it didn't have a screen in it or window or pillars. Didn't have a roof on it. It had a hideous roll bar. Um, but it's got factory wide arches on it. And it's just an ordinary club racing car. Um, which is for sale. So small block? Small block, four speed. Uh, posi traction rear axle. It's got the wide arches on the back with the big wheels. Uh, it's got Hoosier tyres on it. And, and this type of car in England, I would expect to sell for about $30,000, which isn't a bad price. No. It's but where'd you race. get them? It's ready to race? It, it's pretty much ready to race. It doesn't need an exhaust system on it and a few bits and pieces. But what I do is I say to guys, take it as it is for one price or I'll fix it and finish it off for another price. Mm -hmm. mm. How plentiful are Corvettes? They're not, they're not that many over in England. The, the problem is everybody's got this thing about they're going to cost a lot of money to keep going, but actually, real simple car. Yeah. I mean, how many millions and millions of engines have they built for these things? Are um, these revered like a Ferrari would be? No. 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 People who buy Ferraris, I don't know why they do it. They're like hairdressing cars, aren't they? They're like for guys who in their 50s and 60s, they've got nothing better to do and they buy a Ferrari because they want to have the... It's the thing, isn't it? The yeah, badge. Yeah. We've got a Ferrari here. They're actually bits of shit. If you've ever worked on a Ferrari, they're stuck together. They, they're hopeless, but <laughs> it is what it is. Now that Healy, has that seen the road any time lately? Uh, probably not for about seven years. Uh -huh. So that's a Healy 3000. Uh, Left-hand drive again. Bought the car. Funny story with this one, because I went to see it in auction about eight, nine years ago, 
and um, we bought about two, three cars. And we were going to buy this car, but I bid up to about £42,000 at the time on it, but we didn't buy it and it didn't sell. So when I went back on the Monday and we took the other cars away, the guy goes to me, uh, Bernie, you know, uh, I know you had interest, your last bidder. He said, you bid 42,000, do you want to buy it? The guy doesn't want to take it home, back to Europe. I said, yeah, okay. He said, what will you pay for it? I said, 34,000. He said, hold on a second, you, you bid over 40,000 for it on Saturday. I said, yeah, but that was Saturday. Today's Monday. Anyway, we did a deal and I think we paid 37,000 for it or something. So that's Is the a car. Pretty, pretty good car? Yeah, it's a nice car, drives nicely. We have spent a bit of money on it, but it's just a nice old car. Yep. Um, but not, it's been sitting here for eight or nine years? Yeah, I've just got to change the covers off because I've done a little bit of work to it. Mm -hmm. This car here, this is quite a fascinating car. So this car here is a 1931 gold-plated or gold-leaf Cadillac that belonged to one of your guys called Liberace. Yeah. So don't ask me why I bought it. I, was, <laughs> I saw it and I thought, you know what, I've got to own this car. So I bought it. And it's really a one-off. It's a rare, rare car. It's a 31 Cadillac V8, not a V16. And um, I'm going to ship this back to the States. I, I won't be able to sell it here. So gold leaf yeah. is actually gold. It's like gold that's cut into foil <coughs> thickness and glued on to signs, ornament, ornaments, things like that. Well, this, is a, this car has been gold leaf. And you can see the square little... Yeah, little square leaves. Little squares. But that's how big the pads are. And they must have cleared over it then. <coughs> They've lacquered over the whole thing. Gee, this was Liberace's car. <laughs> All right, so what would you ask for something like this? you have any idea? Or... Uh, if I got uh, $75,000 for it in the States, I'd be happy. Um, it actually was built by a billionaire back in the 70s. Now, by the way, this is what they call the missing Cadillac because it was built by a billionaire somewhere in America, I can't remember his name, and it, it was an immaculate, and he, what he used to do was, he had it built, a glass garage built round it, and every time he took it out, he used to have the, the guys come along, take the glass off so he could drive it out, come back when it was finished and put it back. He sold it to a German museum where it languished for about 20 odd years, and then completely disappeared, and then, I couldn't resist, I had to buy it. Don't know, I must have been on drugs at the time, I suppose, but I had to buy it. You know the way sometimes you see something and you think, I got to own that? Well, no, I wish I didn't buy it and I want to sell it. <laughs> so these, wheel, these lights turn with the front wheels? Yeah, something. they're stuck at the moment, but when you turn the steering wheel, it's all connected via a rod to the steering box, to the pitman arm, and it turns with it. Oh, there we go. So uh, you call it, a, it's a rumble seat. It's a rumble seat. That's exactly. Like, you know, like Model A's, Model B's, 33's, yep, yep. 34's, they all had rumble seats. So it's got three steps here. Interesting. If you want to go inside here, which I won't, but. You know, you can go in if you like. Step, 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 and in. And in, yeah. I think in this day, these uh, Cadillacs, uh, you had to have a, a few dollars to buy something like this. It's not a cheap man's car. And this is all, white leather interior and the door handles uh, have been uh, plated in gold leaf and it's got a mink carpet. Mink? It's a mink rug. Isn't that weird? Who, so did Liberace put the mink carpet in there? We don't know. I've got all, if you go on the internet and you check it out, they call it the Liberace Cadillac. Did he own it? I don't know. They're saying it was his. He evidently had loads of cars. Right. But this looks like it would be his. Well, yeah. You'd have to be a very flamboyant person to want to own something like this. But and that's why you own it. Exactly. You know, I, I fell in love with it. <laughs> I thought, where the hell am I going to see another one? Can Car. you show us the, the engine on this? Yeah. I think we can open it up here. I mean, just think, what year is this? 31. 31. This is when Ford was making Model A's. Little anemic four-cylinder flatheads. And, l and look at if you had a little bit of money, which you could buy. Whoa, jeez. So this is the original side out of the eight. So this is actually the slightly cheaper version because the, the bigger engines were the V12s. Mm -hmm. um, but it runs and drives and everything. Have you driven it much? I, I've driven it from the storage unit across the road to this storage unit. Unfortunately, it's got no power steering. 
which is a bit of a bastard really because it's quite heavy but you know it's an iconic car yeah no kidding look at the hood ornaments man so what else you got here anything good uh this is quite a nice car Pantera? You know what this is? Ah, Maserati Merak. Hmm. What's nice about this car is, uh, A, it's a Maserati, hand-built car. Um, I like, particularly like the colour and I love the interior. I've never seen an interior like this in a, in a Maserati. Yeah. Hmm. It's, well, that's typical sort of 70s. If you look at sort of Datsun 280Zs and, and other English cars, they went through this sort of Scottish tartan thing. I love it because it's so different, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. These, yeah. these cars, the key about buying these type of cars is that I suppose if you don't pay too much for them to start with, they're not going to make any more. So they're only going to go up in value. And yeah, they hit a bit of a low, then they go up and they go down. You know, it is what it is. But better than having money sitting in the bank, really, isn't it? So what we have here. Jeez. So, this is a K-Code Mustang. K-Code. K-Code. Now, K-Code means that it came with a Hypo 289 engine, which would have been 271 horsepower. Uh, it had uh, stiffer valve springs, <coughs> different heads, a uh, high zinc body, uh, block. Uh, block. Um, it had a four barrel, of course. So it was, it was the most high performance Hypo 289 you could buy from the factory. Yeah, can we see, see the engine? Yeah. The weirdest thing now is you can get nearly 500 horsepower out of these engines and just a nice old car. So the way you can tell it's a factory K-Code car is the fifth digit after the star is a star 6T09K. So if that's a K, that means it was a Hypo 29, which means it had the logos on the front fender, uh, you know, this, the valve cover said Hypo 289, 271 horsepower. So this is a fastback. Is, is a fast, I mean, there are a lot of coupes in, in, yeah. in Europe, but fastback is kind of unusual. Is, uh, the fastback is a much more desired car than a coupe. A coupe in England is twenty to $30,000. A fastback would be thirty-five dollars to $45,000, and a K-code obviously would be that much more. Mm -hmm. It's my favourite. I don't go for value. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't yeah, care yeah. less what a car is worth. I just love it to death. And I'm a Chevy man. I'm as far as I can say, Ford. <laughs> but you know, there are certain models I really like. And this is one of them. <laughs> they make good noises. The exhaust noise out of a 289 is terrific. Oh, super. They're just really nice cars. I just don't think you American guys understand or realise what you all went through in that uh, muscle car era. It was fantastic. Honda NSX, fabulous. Designed by an Ayrton Senna. Just a super nice car. This is a uh, manual, not an auto. We spent five years looking for a car like this. This is a low mileage car, just a nice car, but boy, one of the best cars you'll ever drive of its era. So this is an Acura, and actually I've, I've spent a little bit of time behind the wheel, very little time behind the wheel of one of these, but. It was an exotic car that was almost too good. Like, whereas a Ferrari, they're a little bit finicky, might break down once in a while. This car is ideal. It's almost too perfect. And the criticism it got from the magazines, which is crazy, is that it's too good to be an exotic car. It started all the time, the heat worked, the air conditioning worked. It's a great car. Hmm. So here's one of my favorite cars. Happens to be under recovery. With Krager rims, no less. Oh my God, 68, 67? I'm not sure, 67, 68. Three-speed manual. This was like a luxury Mustang. Oh, is that the same platform, isn't it? Same, same platform, floor pan. yeah. But it, it was like a step up. Yeah. They had special editions, the Dan Gurney edition, yeah. XR7. Uh, GTE had a 427 side oiler, yeah. which is amazing. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. That's a nice car, wow. All right, sir. We're hitting the road, thank Hit you. Hit the road, okay, cool. Bernie is one interesting character, I think you'll admit. So, saw what he has in the, in the barn. We're gonna go to his house, he's got a few more cars. He's got his racing Corvette there, one of his racing Corvettes. Tea sounds good. Yeah. Tea. Good. 
And this is how I know Bernie from the States is running a black Corvette like, like this. So what, what year is this car? This is uh, my uh, original car, it's a 1958 Corvette. 50, and what do you have in the States? 59 Corvette. Okay, all right. So he's got two virtually identical cars, very well driven, very well prepared. This one you run in the States? No. I mean, this one you run over here? This, this has been to Sebring and Daytona many, many years ago. But we basically, it, my boys race it, I don't race it. I got it. So back in, well, it was obviously in 1958, it was a street car. So I, in the, in the late 70s, when I was going to America, I was looking for a race car. I wanted a Corvette, but I wanted to build the car. So I was buying cars, bringing them back, all C ones. And every car I bought back, I go, that's too good to race. I can make some money out of that. So I never raced it. So about a year later, a friend of mine rings me up in Essex and he goes, I've just got this Corvette in. It used to race in Florida in the 70s with a big block, supercharged big block, down the rear end. Oh, a All drag this, car. A drag car. Yeah. Huge wheels and tyres. Anyway, he said, um, do you want to buy it? I said, well, how much do you want for it? He goes, $4,000. I go, I can't pay you $4,000. So we did a deal. I got the car minus the engine and gearbox and then spent about nine months building it into a circuit racer oh. on drum brakes. And this is the car? This is the same car. So how long? Or well, some of this, it now. You've had this since the probably No, we've probably had it about 38 years, something like that. Whoa, yeah. man. Huh. It's quite a famous car in as much that it's basically a piece of shit, to be honest with you. Sorry about that. But you know what? It's our, it's our family car. Yeah. It surprised everybody when it came out because the only way to race early Corvettes is to dirt track style race them. So you go hell for leather down the straight, get to the corner, forget the brakes because you haven't got any. Just turn in, back on the throttle, everybody backs off because they all think you're going to have a massive accident. And this has got drum brakes? Not now, it hasn't. We okay. learned a lesson a okay. long time ago. Now it runs uh, disc brakes all round, coil overs. Um, you can see here it runs um, oh, yeah. nine-inch forward back axle. What's linkage? <laughs> this has about four sixty-five horsepower. Um, it's a budget-built car. Yep, yep. Mm. It has two trademarks that I have on my cars. One is I like using drag racing big block Chevy as a tow hook. As a tow hook. <laughs> and the other one you might see a bit later. I've got a skull's head inside. Mm. But this car. Most of it's original, except from here back and the front. We've had one or two altercations, as we say, Got with it. guardrails and things. So, anyway, but cool. you know what? It's a great car. Love it to bits. So you have another garage here? Yeah, let's go. Sorry about the weather, but you are in England. Okay. So, this is uh, my other garage. And um, I spent a fair amount of time in here. All right, well, let's walk through these cars here and okay. see what we've got here. So this car here is my younger son, Adam, uh, Mini Cooper. Oh, very Which, nice. um, we're nearly finished restoring it, but he's also got a Corvette. He's got a white 73, which I think you've seen, and he's got the 56 Corvette. So what we, uh, we started out with a reasonably nice car. But the problem with Mini is they suffer from rot on the subframe and front and rear and the bulkhead and everything. So a very good friend of mine, Dave Haskell, I think you might see at some point. I gave his, oh, he goes, oh, not another bloody rust heap. Anyway, so he did all the um, rust repair on it. We bought all new panels. Uh, we tried very hard not to buy Chinese panels because they're crap, they're rubbish, they don't fit. So you're actually better off buying um, British Heritage uh, panels. So it's probably about three days finishing, but you know, don't do too much in the winter. And what, motor, what motors does it have in it? Okay, so this I believe has a 1300 engine. Um, now you may see a nameplate down on the sill there. It says John Cooper. John Cooper, right here. Now John Cooper is a very famous guy, and uh, in later life he would buy cars from. British Leyden, which is Mini, and he'd do his, a conversion. And then the last series of cars, I, I think I'm right in saying, he bought the shell and he built the cars the way he wanted. And my son's gone through five Minis to get this one. Wow. 
Okay. And I don't think he'll ever sell it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? The purists will go, oh, why have you put those wheels on? They stick out. Yeah, lovely. We're You're hot, hot rodders. Rider. You're hot, hot rodders. So what do we have here? Okay. This is really quite an interesting car, this. This is... Um, Ah, Mazda Cosmo. Oh, you know what it is? So, this car here, we only bought it recently. These Mazdas, obviously made in Japan, all made right-hand drive, um, and it was like late 60s. And what they did, they nicked, or as we, you, you don't use the word nick, uh, thieved, all the ideas from other European cars. So, the headlights, for instance, they're Perspex headlights, where they've got louvers in the front, mm -hmm. don't get any condensation. The back end looks a bit like a T-Bird, like a 56, 57 T-Bird. They've used like the very sporty mirrors. What year is it? I think this one's 70. Wow, look at that. Now this is restored. This, here's the funniest thing is, this was a good car that went from Japan to Russia of all places. I, I just, I, I can't fathom it out. And they restored it. I've got all the rotisserie documentation on it. Oh, it's just a fabulous car. This was restored in Russia. In Russia. Then went from Russia to Paris, France. I went along. I looked at it. I go, I've got to own that. That's got to be bought. So it says here estimated 75 to 95,000 yeah. pounds. Did euros. You... I think that's euros. Euros. Okay. Which... So how did you do with it? I ended up paying more money for it, and then we had to pay duty to get it in from Russia to... It probably owes about $110,000, mm -hmm. but cheap car. They're 160, 170, in this condition, maybe 200,000. I'm impressed. I mean, the paintwork, the detail. Yeah, it's a nice car. Yeah, and it runs well? Uh, yeah, we started up, we ran it. I haven't run it for about four or five months. Mm -hmm. We start them up about every three months, especially with these rotary engines. You, because I think the oil drains away, something to do with the cylinders. Uh -huh. You know, it's not like a normal piston yeah. engine. So, uh, I, I love this car. I love the shape. I love the typical American design on it. Yeah. And this is a car that your guys who are in their 40s and 50s would buy because they remember these cars. Yeah. Even though it's a rare old car. Jay Leno's got one of these. Yeah. Well, he's got one of everything, hasn't he? <laughs> he's a greedy bugger. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, look at this tail. It looks like a 1960 Ford. Just is that, things, is that a steel car? Yeah. Just things. Look, the interior. Typical sort of 60s racing type interior. Mm -hmm. and, uh, just the detail on it is really nice. Mm. Very limited production. 343 examples were built between 67 and 68. So in the uh, Haggerty value guide, it says here that for this car in the worst condition that they... Uh, have listed in number four condition, which is fair, 58 grand American dollars. Uh, in good condition, number three is 71,000. Excellent condition is number two, 98 grand. And in concourse condition, $138,000. Yeah. I think we've done well. Do you think this is a concourse? Well, if it got cleaned up by a professional, yeah, I think it pretty much is because it's as nice underneath as it is on top. Yeah. The gaps and everything are actually better than they probably came out of the factory. I, I would think so, but not in this environment. Maybe yeah. at Greenwich or something, you know, yeah. it would do. Nice car. Yeah. Well, what else you got in here? Uh, this car is quite interesting. Okay. This is, um, I actually built this about 10, 12 years ago. It's the last proper restoration I actually did. So I don't know if you recognize it at all. Oh, yeah. And, and you restored this, no kidding. Yeah. I didn't paint it, but I pretty much did everything wow. else. So this is your James Bond Aston Martin DB5. So another story behind this one. So this is the original colour that they, they built these cars in. They built them in about five or six colours. Built as a race car, but more as a sort of gentleman's race car. These used to be $20,000, 30 years. Nobody wanted them. Yeah. Um, what do you think they're going for now? They dropped in value to about £750,000, about a million dollars. That's what this is worth? Well, here's the thing. 
We decided that when we bought this car, we would leave the roll cage in, we'd buy a new pair of leather seat, bucket seats. We had the engine, I don't know if we're going to have a look at this, this is something oh, else. Oh, look at that beauty. A bit dirty, but, but wow, there you go. Wow. That's a big That's a cylinder. big engine, mm -hmm. yeah. How big are those cylinders? They're huge. I don't know. I can't, I can't remember how many litres it. 4.3 or something like that on Webers. Mm -hmm. A lot of this stuff is original, um, stainless steel exhaust, but it all came with it. We paid a fair amount of money for it, but nothing like what it's worth. How long have you had it? Um, probably about 10 years, 12 years. What a beauty. Yeah. What a neat car to drive. Wow. And all the bodywork is all handmade. It's so we steel? Had a, no, uh, all aluminium. Do you aluminum. say aluminum? aluminum? No, aluminum. we say aluminum. You say it wrong. What did you say, aluminum? I think we invented it, didn't we? Did America invent that? You invented Coca-Cola, that's about it. <laughs> anyway, so we had a hell of a time doing the body work and I gave it to a friend of mine who does concourse work. Um, they're charging to paint this, to do the body work and paint this car, 40,000, 50,000, ridiculous amounts of money. But it, this is all glued. It's not welded, so it's all glued together, and they're all hand formed. So what a beauty! Hmm. It's got wider arches on the back, um, so these are all been flared. The mm -hmm. arches, and I've had uh, a Barani type wheel, wire wheel made for them, slightly wider. Those are alloy, uh, stainless steel. Even you Yanks kept the stainless steel as stainless steel and didn't, didn't do anything with that word, did you? But anyway, it's a great car, this. It's probably only done six, 700 miles since it was built. It's been on the track once. So what we have here is a 993 GT2, which really is a factory race car. This car's been down around Daytona uh, about 15 years ago at approximately 183 miles an hour on the banking. This actually is a very rare car. And one of these sold, I think last year or the year before, for 1.7 million pounds. I don't think they made that many of them. Mm -hmm. And Porsche actually used this car. Uh, they take it to Goodwood for the revival meeting. We let them take it, you know, what, what the hell? Yeah. Cool. You know, people need to see these things. In a way, it's a shame that they sit here, but they do get used. And this looks, I mean, if I was figuring out what this is, it looks like another Porsche. Yeah. You know, this is a barn find show. Could, couldn't you put, have rusty cars here instead? Well, they're dirty, that's about as near as we. <laughs> so this is, um, we bought this car about seven or eight years ago. This is a Japanese import. Um, it's a 964 RS, and it's been mucked about with, so it's got different wheels on it, the suspension's different. Uh, this is one of the, my, Porsches are just great cars. You know, I like Porsches from the sort of mid to late 70s ups when they put a G50 box in it. It, it just transforms the car. You know, they're just great cars. The, the Germans have a real good idea how to make cars. Thanks for having us at your home. Thank you very at, much. At bar number one, <laughs> bar number two. <laughs> and I think we're going to meet you back at Mabel's yeah, garage. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. Cool cars. So uh, you drag race the Corvette? No, this is that car in the garage. Uh -huh. So they did a feature on me. And, the, and right at the end of the day, this was at Snetterton, the guy goes, uh, does it do wheel spins? I said, does it do wheel spins? I'll tell you what, stand behind the car with your camera and uh, I'll show you what wheel spin it will do. So I just let it rip and um, he was quite impressed. <laughs>